happening when rainwater dissolve carbon dioxide and this dissolved carbon dioxide with the water form bicarbonate salt when it comes in contact with soil it forms calcium bicarbonate magnesium bicarbonate etc so hardness is caused in water like this now to understand the action of water with soap we need to understand what the soap molecule itself is soap molecule itself can be termed as sodium salt of fatty acid mane the chemical name of soap is sodium salt of fatty acid and what are fatty acids fatty acids are long carbon chain carboxylic acid long carbon chain carboxylic acid are known as fatty acids when sodium is attached to them then soap is formed the whole molecule of soap can be expressed as a molecule consisting a long hydrocarbon chain and a polar head this is the polar head and this is long hydrocarbon chain this hydrocarbon chain is hydrophobic means it is water repelling while the polar head that is ionic part is hydrophilic means it is water attracting when we add this water in uh so soap then what happens soap molecule arrange like this this is one of the soap molecule it arranges like this its hydrophobic tail points toward oil particle or the dirt particle means it remains away from water while the hydrophilic head remains towards water these are the hydrophilic heads and these are hydrophobic tails and in this manner number of a uh, soap molecules are arranged around dirt or oil particle this kind of aggregation is known as associated or aggregated colloid or micelle means soap molecule forms micelle in which hydrocarbon tail is toward oil and hydro uh, philic head is toward water and this dirt particle is then removed from fibers in this manner so this is the way cleansing action of soap is done but what happens when the water is hard if the water is hard then such kind of cleansing action can't occur let us see what happens this is representation of a soap molecule here 18 carbon chain is there which is known as stearic acid and the whole compound is known as sodium stearate this sodium stearate that is soap molecule when it is added into hard water and hard water consist soluble salts then cation of these soluble salts react with the soap molecule and precipitate out in the form of calcium or magnesium salt means white scum is produced this is the formation of white scum and in this manner soap is destroyed soap is not able to perform cleansing action due to presence of these hardness causing salts as their cation react with the soap molecule and precipitate it out here you can see in this picture the micelle cleaning capacity is destroyed by hard water ions like calcium magnesium etc they are taking up soap molecule and precipitating out in this manner and no cleansing action is happening so if all these cations like calcium magnesium 
strontium, iron, or manganese, and some of the anions like bicarbonate anion HCO3 minus, sulfate anion, chloride, etc., are present in water. They form some soluble salts, and these soluble salts may cause water to be hard and cause destruction of soap. What amount of these salt can cause water to be hard that we need to determine? You can see in this table that 0 to 6 milligram per liter of salt in water is allowable. Man is such water is known as soft water. 61 to 120 milligram per liter is moderately hard water. 121 to 180 milligram per liter is hard water and above 180 milligram per liter is very hard water which causes number of defects in the uses where uh, in the operations where it is used. Expression of hardness. Now we all know that hardness is due to presence of soluble salts. But how the amount of these soluble salts is expressed that we need to understand? Hardness of water is always expressed in terms of milli equivalent per liter of CaCO3 that is calcium carbonate. Though calcium carbonate is not at all causing any hardness. But even it is though calcium carbonate is not causing, causing any hardness but the hardness is expressed in terms of CaCO3 equivalent 1 milli equivalent of CaCO3 is equal to 50 milligrams of CaCO3 per liter. And to convert it into CaCO3 equivalent means the amount of hardness when it is needed to be converted to CaCO3 equivalent, this formula is used. The amount of hardness causing metal in milligram per liter is multiplied by 50 upon equivalent weight of hardness causing salt. Despite of this you can also use 100 upon molecular weight of hardness causing salt means here the hardness is converted into CaCO3 equivalent. Now expression of hardness is always done in CaCO3 equivalent but it can have different type of units. These units are namely ppm that is parts per million, milligram per liter, degree Clark or degree French. We will be taking one by one all these units and will try to understand about the meaning of ppm, milligram per liter, degree Clark and degree French and also what are the relationship between all these units. Parts per million is defined as one part of CaCO3 equivalent hardness present per 10 to the power 6 parts of water. Milligram per liter is part of hardness causing salt present in milligram per liter. Degree Clark is defined as number of grains of CaCO3 equivalent per gallon of water or in other terms it is part of CaCO3 equivalent hardness present per 70,000 parts of water. Degree French is parts of CaCO3 equivalent hardness present per 10 to the power 5 parts of water. 
these are the different definitions at different places different units are used somewhere degree clerk somewhere degree french milligram per liter or ppm now let us see how to convert one unit into another one as shown over here ppm and milligram per liter are related one ppm is nothing but 1 mg per liter and this is equal to 0.1 degree french which is equal to 0.07 degree clark if you take 1 degree clark then it would be equal to 1.43 degree french 14.3 ppm and same for mg per liter 1 degree french is equal to 10 ppm 10 mg per liter and 0.7 degree clerk in number of operations we need to convert one form of the unit of hardness into another form and for that such relationship is very important now after talking about what is hardness how it is caused what are the sources of hardness how it is expressed and what are the units of hardness we need to also know about different types of hardness and hardness is basically classified into two classes temporary hardness and permanent hardness first let us see temporary hardness temporary hardness is caused by bicarbonates of calcium and magnesium cation as the name temporary means it can be removed easily by simple operation like boiling and that's why it is termed temporary since it is due to bicarbonate salt it is also known as carbonate hardness so we can define temporary hardness as the hardness caused due to bicarbonates which can be removed simply by boiling and uh, it is also known as carbonate hardness now what happens upon boiling how temporary hardness can be removed simply by boiling that we need to understand these are the reactions which show removal of temporary hardness upon boiling here the boiling is done as we know temporary hardness is due to bicarbonate example of calcium bicarbonate and magnesium bicarbonate is taken both of the water sample consisting bicarbonate are heated or boiled upon boiling they lose water and carbon dioxide and the product formed is caco3 and mgco3 the downward arrow over here show that these salts are insoluble in water since the salts are insoluble in water they settles down and removed from the water as we know hardness is due to only and only soluble salts none of the insoluble salt cause hardness and since boiling of bicarbonate remove them in the form of insoluble salt in other words hardness can be removed like this so temporary hardness can be removed by boiling as it gets converted into carbonate salts now what about permanent hardness permanent hardness is due to presence of chlorides sulfates or nitrates sometime of calcium and magnesium basically or sometimes by other heavy metals like aluminum iron copper etc these salts don't decompose upon boiling so what we can say permanent hardness can't be removed by simply boiling but doesn't mean it can't be removed at all it can be removed by some other operations some other softening methods since no bicarbonate salt is there that's why we can also call it as non carbonate hardness in short we can say that water hardness is of two type temporary and
permanent temporary is also known as carbonate hardness permanent non carbonate hardness temporary is due to bicarbonate salts permanent is due to chlorides and sulfate salt temporary can be removed by boiling while permanent hardness can't be removed by boiling as the salts causing permanent hardness are not decomposed simply by boiling the water sample consisting hardness causing salts how much of hardness is there if we want to know then we need to do some experimentation means we need to estimate hardness and the estimation of hardness can be done by either edta method or o harness method and today we are going to talk about most commonly used method known as edta method edta method is actually a complexometric titration method complexometric titration method means in this during titration some complex formation occurs the whole process occurs at a fixed ph using buffer and the titrating agent is always a complexing agent and in this ma uh, method edta is used do you know what is edta edta that is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid it's a chelating agent chelate means a very complex a compound in which metal is connected to ligand by number of bonds six or seven bonds or so here edta is present and edta is a hexadentate ligand means one molecule of edta can form several bonds with the metal ion and the number of these bond here is 6 edta is a hexadentate ligand such kind of chelates when formed they are very stable complexes and uh, these stable complexes can be removed from the water this is the picture of edta here the formation